How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So today we're going to take a look at the fastest SSD that we've done on the channel yet and that is the Sabrent Rocket and PCI Express 4 NVMe SSD and this thing is a beast and it comes with a beefy cooler as well which we'll get into. So in the past we have done quite a bit of SSD reviews, we've done external SSDs, we even took a look at the uh, Sabrent Rocket Q external a Thunderbolt 3 SSD which is just a, a beast. I love that thing so much, we use it every day and then of course just some other uh, internal SSDs as well. But like I mentioned in the beginning there's nothing that really comes that close to this one. So for our model that we have here we do have the two terabyte a model which will luckily be enough storage space for a main drive if we wanted to install like call of duty modern warfare as well with all of its just stupidly big updates you'll have enough space right here now like i mentioned the rocket is a pci express a 4 ssd which you can use on our current uh, amd am4 platforms and currently you'll be able to use it on the next generation of intel platforms as well to utilize all of that speed but it's also of course backwards compatible with pci express 3 so you do have a current uh, gen uh, intel system it's still be able to work on that you'll just won't be able to get uh, that extra performance out of it now just from the unboxing experience on its own you know you made the right decision because it comes inside a premium metallica container everything is just packaged completely as safe and it just looks so great it's not really needed it doesn't really add towards the ssd on its own but that unboxing experience is just so nice and just makes you feel nice and cozy inside so from the moment you get the ssd you do have the sense that money is well spent right here now pricing wise it does range around 170 dollars or 3000 rand for the one a terabyte model and then for the two terabyte model it ranges around 380 dollars or a 7000 rand for here in south africa but that is with the heatsink if you don't necessarily want the heatsink you can also pay around ten dollars or less but either if you want to buy it separately it costs 28 dollars so it's just going to depend up to your needs if you actually do need the heatsink because a lot of motherboards these days do have the heat spreaders included for your nvme slots so you don't always need it but it does look quite cool so you do have that option at least now speaking of the heat spreader again this is a quite a beefy little guy with the it consisting out of an aluminum tray with a thermal pad that your ssd sits on the top of then on the top of your ssd you do get a, another thermal pad that's connected to the aluminum heat sink going through the aluminum heat sink there are three copper heat coils and then finally sitting on top of that you get a, another heat spreader so it's definitely going to keep your ssd nice and a cool now we did a test the ssd to its a max running just a bunch of a benchmarks and copy tests for around 30 minutes we really pushed it to its max and it only reached around 71 degrees which is honestly not bad and that's also in a quite a hot room i'm already sweating inside here so yeah it, it wasn't a, a cold environment at all now with all of that off the way let's get into how the rocket performed just a little something to keep in mind is that again we have the two terabyte model and it might have a different performance compared to the one terabyte model which we have seen previously so just keep that in mind so then for our sequential tests the rocket did extremely well being the best out of all of the ssds that we have tested so far even beating out the corsair mp600 which we tested a while back in randoms the rocket also did really well only being beaten by the transcend mte 220s by a very very small margin we also ran ATTO and the results were amazing we saw over five gigabytes per second in reads and almost hitting four gigabytes a second in writes but it also runs a couple of crystal disk benchmarks where it did perform really well there again with a no surprise being our fastest ssd that we've tested so far to date so it's honestly really good 
Now we did also do a copy and a paste a test with our 38 gig Steam backup and then also a 113 gig file. So firstly, we did make a duplicate of the files on the SSD, then a copy data from the SSD to an external Thunderbolt 3 SSD, and then also back to the rocket again. Now, just something to mention is that the external SSD that we use is the fastest one that we currently have here in the studio. It's that uh, Rocket Thunderbolt 3 one. But unfortunately, the motherboard that we use uh, didn't have a Thunderbolt, so it's only USB 3.2 Gen 2. Uh, and that might be a bit of a bottleneck with our copied back to it and, and so on. And yet again, like I mentioned, the Rocket is the fastest SSD that we've tested so far. So none of the other ones would even be able to keep up. So just keep all of that in mind. Uh, but here we can see that a more what real life results will look like. So the duplicate test, it only took 26 seconds for the 38 giga file and 77 seconds for the 113 giga file. Then to copy from the rocket to the external, that only took two minutes for the 38 gig file and eight minutes and 16 seconds for the 113 gig file. And then finally for the copy back test, the 38 gig file took only one minute and the 113 gig file took around two minutes and 45 seconds. So this is honestly a quick and a cool little rocket. It's perfect for, for Elon Musk to use. Now a great addition is of course the uh, PCI Express R4. You will need that if you wanted to get the max, of, max performance out of it. But luckily Intel again will later on on, move into PCI Express 4 as well. Now you also do get uh, two different types of the Sabrina rocket, one being the QLC model and then also the one we have is uh, the TLC model. Now the difference between the two is a bit technical but the QLC NAND stores a 4 bits per cell by sending a one of the 16 possible charge states. Triple level cell, the TLC NAND, only takes Eight. But of course, this is still a formidable task. But because fewer bits are written to TLC and NAND compared to QLC memory, TLC can withstand a higher number of programs, erase cycles, it, so it just kind of lasts longer. But now if you just want something a bit more in depth, we will definitely leave a link in the video description just to explain it a bit more if you want to find out for yourself. So then in conclusion, the added heat spur is a tiny bit pri pricey if you do pay for it uh, separately uh, and you don't really need it if your motherboard does already come with an included heat sprayer cover which will just fit your motherboard up better really, it'll look a bit cleaner. But if you don't have that, then definitely take a look at the heat spreader with the rocket and rather get that combination. For me personally, I kind of do like it. It's something a bit different, but of course it does kind of stick out a bit too much for some people. So it's going to depend up to what you personally are like, but yeah, you do have that option at least. So functionality, it does do a great job, but aesthetics, it's not always the best. But now when it comes to speed, this little rocket definitely lives up to its name. And it will be a really nice addition if you can use it to, with some of the upcoming PCI Express up for our laptops that we're also going to see soon. I think that's going to look really good and perform great. Might actually need to, need to try that out. But obviously you won't be able to get a heating with that. So we'll just see how hot it actually gets. You might just need to take off the entire panel underneath your laptop to keep it cool. I'm not sure, we will have to wait and see. Hopefully it doesn't get too crazy hot. Now the price is also very attractive compared to some of the other PCI Express R4 SSDs on the market. Not that it's really cheaper, it's roughly the same price, but that's with the heatsink included. And honestly, no reason not to go for the rocket and only reasons to go for it. Uh, and honestly, this is also one of the easiest recommendations that I've had to do yet because there's no real downsides for it. So I will leave links in the video description if you want to get it for yourself. Big shout out to Sabrin for sending over a for a view. And if you guys enjoyed this review, please, of course, like, share, comment, comment like always. And I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.